all right so good evening and uh, morning or might be good afternoon and so this is uh, hangouts on air and uh, after struggling a while with uh, this live coding tv uh, i think uh, hangouts uh, is probably way more easy to operate and uh, understand <laughs> so this uh, uh, thing will move on with a screen sharing session now but in the meanwhile i think if you have questions we have uh, something called a q and a app here where you can probably post your questions i'm not sure how it is coming up uh, at uh, your side and we have something like chat also available here so let me uh, move quickly to the original session because we are already 5 minutes over the time so just trying to share my screen all right so the session uh, about rest web services in apex this is uh, basically a two fold session in the first part i'm trying to cover the common scenario where uh, error handling is not done directly in your apex rest services and uh, i recently ran into one such project the error handling was so much different across the uh, different to apex rest services exposed in class files that it become troublesome to write a uh, client code in android for the same so to get rid of that error uh, and to make error handling uniform across your apex rest services uh, this is a small piece of advice so what you are seeing here uh, is a class called rest model i tr uh, try to organize classes into a nest uh, top level parent class and put them in as a nested class the reason because uh, java packages are not available in apex but this gives you a good grouping for a small small uh, apex classes which otherwise will be a little bit tough to handle as a different class file so just uh, go line by line with me so this class is basic virtual and it represents an apex result so result in general should always indicate if the operation is success or failure and if you can very good use of rest status course you shouldn't uh, rely on this property you can safely skip on that then it should show what errors which happen and optionally it can also uh, give a stack trace of complete error if required so next is uh, uh, init block which is a shortcut to con fault constructor which is invoked every time when you uh, create instance of this class so it just to initialize success by default to true and uh, error to a empty error and then these are uh, a few utility method to easily add errors set success to false we'll come back to them later on but for now if we scroll down to error so error is very simple it just says what's the status what's the message and what are the fields if they are involved in the error and it gives a handy constructor to quickly convert a database error uh, which comes in insert create and those kind of operations and uh, it also has uh, a utility method for taking string error messages if you want to see a real usage of this class so i have created a very simple uh, apex service for the sake of this demo which basically is having a get method and a post method so this uh, get method is just loading accounts i'm not uh, doing any filtering because uh, that's not the goal to show a very complex account loading here so the idea is uh, now you, you can create instances of this class so i have not covered this thing you must be, must be wondering what is going on here what is as result so if i go back here so now uh, you have a basic result class in place which represents any form of restful result now you can specialize this class by narrating it and creating a subject result so basically what it says is whatever there in result it's there but i also want to pass some records back in my response so that's uh, something which is going on here and if uh, i come here so that's the thing which i'm using here that uh, i'm loading some uh, records here which are account records and i'm trying to store them back into the thing in case any exception comes i call this header method and that's it and apart from that i'm just returning back this result so if we take a quick peek at this add error method now and also this records property 
So this records property is uh, not in the parent class. It's coming from here. And if we go to result class again, the add error exception method, it's basically calling the other method to just add the string error message. And then it's doing some fancy things. So for example, it's saying that the request status code should be 400, which should be uh, by default for any bad request. So this is an optional step. If you like to do that, it's uh, generally a good practice in case you know it's a bad request. I'm just keeping a very simplified form of code here. Uh, it might not be always suitable in all situations. But the pattern uh, which I'm trying to bring here is you might put a lot of code here and there which says a status code is equal to 400. So this avoids this copy paste mostly in case of exception or validation errors. You put this status code as 400 when the request is not bad. So you can try generalizing these things and putting them into common place to facilitate code reuse. Apart from that, we are checking for uh, Apex header call, oh sorry, HTTP header call Apex rest at stack trace. What it is doing is it's basically adding the exception stack trace to the stack trace property. So you must be wondering why I'm not always adding the stack trace and why I'm doing it conditionally. The reason is usually uh, we should try to keep our answers compact and everybody not be interested in tech stack trace so it might be helpful for the developer to sometimes see why things are going on wrong and it might save your time in creating debug logs for a given user and quickly see what's the flow of events which are linked to a given so that's mostly it and if uh, we explore this thing now so we have something called rest console here so rest console is basically a chrome extension like here, you can get it from App Store. If you want, I can put the link uh, back uh, once the session is done. So here I have uh, the URL for this node and this REST source for this Apex REST service here, this one. So if I do a uh, GET request here, so see, it gives me success true. There is no error stack trace. There is no error. And then the records property is having list of all the accounts which we have, right? So it's pretty simple. Uh, but the idea is now any client code can generalize itself to check if the operation was successful. These three properties will always be there. So error handling in Apex side and on the client side, whether it is PHP, Xcode, oh, I'm sorry, iOS, Android, whatever it is, or any JavaScript client they can write a good code as well based on your good patterns in Apex Test Services. So if we move ahead and uh, see what we have next is uh, there's a post request too, which makes it easy to create both accounts and contacts in one shot. So what it is trying to do is this is usual database save point. It's inserting the account here. And then for each uh, contact associating the account ID, inserting the contacts and in the result, uh, it's sending uh, account ID and contact ID. So let's take a quick look at what this guy is. So again, this guy is uh, specializing this rest model dot result, which we have just seen. And it's adding two properties which are needed by the client back. So here, uh, I'm just updating these properties here like this. In case of exception, I'm rolling back and adding the error just as usual. Rollback is needed to roll back all these uh, different uh, Object. So if you want to see that in action, first uh, let's uh, see a bad thing. So here I have this sample thing created. Let me paste it somewhere nicely. So if I go here and set syntax to JavaScript. So it's sending, let's say, an account with name is equal to account from rest to one and it's sending one of the contact with first name and one with both first name and last name so ideally this should make everything crash so let's give it a try and uh, the reason for the crash is uh, the last name property is required on contact so if i make a post here see i'm using this post button so what i get is the error is stack trace the message also that the last name is missing and success is set to false. So it is very, uh, I think, self-explanatory. You must be wondering why this guy came. I didn't pass that, but uh, silently I did. So this is the custom header which I'm passing as true. So if I set it to false or remove it, this property shouldn't come. 
So see, this is coming as null. So it's an optional thing, but it's pretty helpful if you have very complex Apex logic and you want to see the stack trace. So this is how uh, it is. And just to uh, make things moving here, let's uh, add uh, last name and see if it goes. So if I say last name and hopefully all correct. So all right, I think it works. It says success true account ID is this thing and contact IDs are these ones. So if I go back here, hopefully I should be able to see it by refreshing it. So here's my account and uh, here are these two contacts. So this is, I think, the key uh, thing I wanted to highlight in this first session of live code also as I was a little bit new and nervous about this live coding thing, which is uh, taking a bit to set up right. So I wanted to first take a little bit of dive here and see how things uh, go. So in next part, we will see how we can organize uh, Apex REST services together. Once you big work on a big project where there are multiple REST services and you want to club them together. So it could be a good way to do the same. So in the meanwhile, I don't know how you can ask questions because I am not sure if you are able to join it uh, via the Hangouts on Air link. And But most probably, uh, I can open Twitter. If you are on Twitter, you can tweet me the questions. I can answer them back to make it simple. So I'm just keeping a uh, five minutes window for the same. And in case some questions come, I will probably answer them. All right, so we have a question which is saying, I'm not able to uh, understand the concept of nested class. So let me share the screen again and uh, go back uh, on the nested class stuff. So see the nested class thing uh, is done here as uh, we have one, two, and three classes here. You can always create them as first Apex class, and what I mean by that is you can always go to new Apex class and create them as a new class. The problem which happens uh, over the time in big projects is it's very tough to relate which class is created for what reason and why it is uh, there and where it is. So just like in Java or other languages, you have packages. This is uh, my own way to create packages. Like you club very small uh, utility classes or some uh, of these related nature classes in a top level class and name it like model. For example, you have a class uh, you're working on, let's say, page for accounts. So you can say accounts uh, VF model or something. So that uh, basically makes it handy to get control of all the related classes, which are specifically for that VF page. And nested classes, uh, you can just declare it like I have done here. The syntax is uh, like that. So your exact question, what uh, are you finding uh, tricky here on the nested class? So if you can post that, I can probably try to cover that one. OK, so stack trace. Next question is uh, stack trace. So again, uh, this thing relates to the concept of uh, Java 
world or I think in any language. I'm just uh, too much in love with Java. So stack trace, uh, let me Google it. I think if Wikipedia shows what stack trace is, stack trace is basically flow of uh, stacks. Most of the languages are stack based, so they say on what order the things are executing. But that's unfortunately, I think, not coming up. Let me see if any. Anybody else has shown a decent stack trace. Yeah, this is a very good example, actually. So if you see here, this is Java code, but it relates pretty well to Apex also. There is a null pointer exception coming. So it shows the complete flow that the stuff is started from bootstrap dot Java line 14. Then it went to author dot Java line 25. And then book dot Java at line 16, where this incident have. So this is stack trace is pretty important for developers and sometimes even the client application developers uh, to debug and report back the issues. So this gives you the complete idea without uh, spending too much time creating debug logs for individual users. For example, you have created an Apex REST service for a guest profile or a specific profile. So without this thing, you might have to log in as them and then try to reproduce the error and get a stack trace. But if sometimes you have a stack trace, you can easily reach out to the problem without spending too much time. So it uh, saves your time in that way. So coming back to the questions window again, any other questions we have? I think one minute left. Let me check Twitter also. So. I think uh, all well now, nothing new. All right, so I think uh, we are good to go. I'm trying to post the questions now in Hangouts on Air. Hopefully, they should appear to you as well. OK, guys, so I think this is it for now. Uh, I see no more questions coming. But in next part, we will see how we can use dependency injection in Apex REST services to club uh, different REST operations, again, to avoid a scattering of too much REST services here and there. Hope you like this demo. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.